this is a Ron talk and uh, in this video I would actually like to discuss the genetics of uh, the uh, Achaemenids, Parthians and Sassanids and uh, the uh, Iranians from that era. Now we do not have any Achaemenid, Parthian or Sassanid samples but nonetheless we do have samples from uh, the periods before this period as well as uh, after this period and all of these uh, samples indicate, indicate a great degree of uh, genetic continuity in Iran uh, around uh, 90 to 95 percent and uh, in fact uh, this is very much evident uh, especially in uh, the uh, Iron Age sample we have as well as uh, the samples uh, from uh, some of the samples from the BMAC horizon and obviously after that we have a sample from the 1500s uh, and uh, uh, that is very very close genetically to modern Iranians as well as uh, the Iranians, uh, the uh, Iron Age Iranian sample and then we also have a Bronze Age Iranian sample uh, you know and this one is uh, pretty uh, close as well to modern Iranians though it is a bit more step shifted and uh, likely the reason for this was uh, because of uh, a migration from the Caucasus into northwestern Iran so this was not an Iranic sample nonetheless it does provide a general uh, you know it does provide a general uh, guideline for what uh, the early Iranics likely resembled so to begin as I have previously made it clear the origins of uh, the early Iranics uh, lie in uh, the uh, Andronova culture which was uh, an extension of the Yamnaya culture and uh, after these Androno steppe herders infiltrated the BMAC culture and hybridized with the native uh, populations this led to the collapse of uh, the highly urbanized BMAC culture nonetheless there was a great uh, deal of uh, intercultural exchange uh, linguistically mostly linguistically but also culturally as well you know uh, urbanization was adopted from by these pastoralists step pastoralists from the native Iranian uh, farmers uh, of the BMAC culture after and again it's not uh, right uh, to call these farmers Iranians because uh, they were not Iranic speakers nonetheless uh, they were uh, uh, they were uh, farmers of uh, the region that is uh, contemporarily uh, known as Iran the nation as well as uh, surrounding nations such as uh, Uzbekistan uh, Tajikistan and Afghanistan and also Pakistan so that's definitely something worth uh, noting here anyways uh, after this uh, our initial uh, our, you know this initial uh, hybridization uh, there was uh, there was the emergence of the yaz culture which was just an extension of this uh, androno bmac hybrid and this is from this culture we get uh, the formation of the early iranics now there was a split here those who remained behind uh, became known as the Sogdians and the Bactrians and other Eastern Iranics and uh, you know this was actually the Yaz 2 and Yaz 3 culture so it was just a different phase of this culture whereas uh, those who migrated to Iran uh, became known as the uh, you know they were the uh, Persians uh, the Medes uh, as well as various other uh, minor Iranian tribes and all of these tribes at this at around this time inhabited the Iranian plateau and uh, over time they hybridized with the native population but they were already hybridized before even reaching uh, the plateau and that's also something worth taking into account here anyway uh, I will begin now uh, using uh, this PCA uh, this PCA is from uh, Davitsky and again I have uh, taken a look at uh, this before uh, you know I've modified it multiple times but again uh, you've seen it in my previous videos but anyways uh, my estimations are that the Achaemenids most likely resemble this uh, Kongju sample right here that I have circled and uh, you know the range of the Achaemenid elite extended within this circle it is my belief that it extended within this circle so some of them may have been uh, genetically you know most of them were genetically intermediates between uh, modern day Iranians and modern day northern Europeans the majority of them were closer to modern day Iranians but some of them may have been a little bit uh, closer to uh, contemporary uh, northern European populations of course this is a uh, not uh, verifiable without ancient uh, sampling but nonetheless this is what I feel is the range of the Achaemenids you know so they would 
today the closest uh, existing population to these uh, original uh, Achaemenids uh, would likely be uh, the Yagnobi people and uh, this is specifically true of the old Achaemenid elite you know uh, some of them may have even have had uh, blonde hair and blue eyes now this was not a result of them being uh, of European uh, descent mostly European descent rather it was a result of uh, them being uh, uh, largely step derived and that's what gave them these features and uh, Actually, another population, uh, another uh, one of these samples, which were very similar to these uh, peoples, are likely this uh, Bronze Age Iranian sample. And actually, you know, the Kongju had a bit of uh, minor East Asian admixture as well. So I would say that uh, the Bronze Age Iranian is actually a better uh, source for uh, their admixture and their heritage as opposed to uh, the Kongju. And uh, yeah, so I've just uh, made the correction here. Uh, sorry, I, I, I was uh, actually uh, recording this before I actually made uh, any changes to the chart. So just uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, this was likely the range of the Achaemenids. And the majority of them were likely, you know, very close to uh, modern Iranians. And this is the elite, by the way. Most of the natives at this point likely still re uh, reflected uh, those Chalcolithic Iranian samples we had from early on, but the Persians, the Medes, as well as uh, some of those early Iranic tribes were likely closest to contemporary Yagnobi peoples, and uh, you know, uh, this is what was most likely the case here, but nonetheless they were not European because of their significant uh, Iranian farmer ancestry. Moving on, uh, we have the Parthians, and the Parthian elite were likely uh, a bit more step derived than the Achaemenids because uh, you have to keep in mind here that uh, these Eastern Iranic uh, populations largely remain the same uh, since the Yaz phase, so they did have a bit more uh, step ancestry than most of the Achaemenid elite. Nonetheless, I feel that they were still mostly uh, close to that uh, Bronze Age Iranian sample. And the range uh, for their uh, admixture was obviously, uh, you know, their range, uh, the, the range of uh, these uh, Parthians on this PCA is obviously much uh, smaller compared to Ach the Achaemenid range because most of them were likely already pretty much, uh, they became one population, you know, they were, they, there were likely not many, uh, you know, many variations within the elite as well. The Parthian elite and most of the Parthian natives were largely and likely uh, the same, the natives of the region of Parthia, not of contemporary Iran, but again, uh, the Parthians were likely a hybrid population uh, resembling uh, the closest to contemporary uh, Yagnobi peoples, and uh, you know, later on, they interbred with many uh, of uh, within the native uh, Iranian population of the time, uh, which again likely just uh, resembled the modern Iranians and the Bronze Age Iranian, but. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I do feel that uh, the Parthian elite, again, uh, genetically were very similar to the uh, Achaemenid elite. And, uh, you know, when we get these Parthian and Achaemenid samples, uh, all of our answers, questions will be answered. So, again, uh, you have to keep in mind here that phenotype does not necessarily equal uh, genotype. And, uh, you know, this means that uh, whatever the genetics are, it doesn't necessarily reflect in their facial features, though it usually does. So even if some of these, uh, you know, if uh, some of these uh, uh, elites uh, had uh, very much European features, uh, like the Yagnobis, they were nonetheless not Europeans because they were a hybrid population between Iranian farmers and Andronovo, uh, rather Andronovo, step past, or list, oh, sorry again, uh, not really using a script here and I am also having a bit of uh, issues with my mind but uh, nonetheless I think uh, this is what the case was here and uh, yeah it's it's definitely interesting I think these Parthian elites were uh, rich in uh, R1A uh, as well as R1B and uh, that's in terms of their haplogroups and uh, again they were very much heavily step derived now the final uh, population I'm going to take a look at here is uh, the uh, rather are the uh, Sassanids and uh, again the Sassanids likely uh, had a lot of uh, step admixture though uh, it was not as much as the Achaemenids or the Parthians and uh, 
it was likely closer to contemporary Iranian, uh, you know, contemporary Iranian than some of the uh, Sassanid elites actually even intermarried with uh, native uh, women as well as Jewish women. So many of them would have likely uh, clustered with uh, contemporary Iranians. And most of the population at this time was the same as uh, the modern Iranians, even the elites, you know, the range for uh, the Sassanids is here. And... Uh, you know, the closest uh, Iranian population to them was likely the Zoroastrians. Now, again, we don't have any Sassanid samples, but we still can be pretty confident that this is their range, specifically based on, uh, you know, Sassanid depictions. From these depictions, we have seen that the Sassanids uh, were very much so a population which was very much uh, resembling uh, contemporary uh, Iranians, you know, the Sassanid elite, uh, and uh, not only that, but uh, we can clearly see that most of these uh, depictions depict uh, clearly a uh, Iranian phenotype, not a Nordic phenotype or a European phenotype, but an Iranian phenotype. And, uh, you know, again, uh, this is just solely based on my speculation, but uh, it's based on the evidence we have both prior to uh, the, uh, er, the rise of these early Iranian dynasties and the later Iranian dynasties, such as the Parthians and the Sassanids, and after this period. And all of this evidence so far has proven a great deal of genetic continuity in Iran. Now we just need Sassanid, uh, Achaemenid, and Parthian era samples to seal the deal uh, on this question. But I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is the case here, uh, and uh, this is uh, the reality here, and uh, yeah. A final thing uh, to note here is that individuals such as Jason Reza Georgiani as well as white nationalists go a bit extreme here, and they go extreme in the sense that they claim, oh yeah, if, uh, you know, one... Uh, they, they look white, you know, then that means ancient Iranians were white or that uh, because in recent times Iran has not done as well as it did in the past, it's because uh, genetically ancient Iranians were gen Europeans, you know, white. Whiteness isn't even a real identity, it's solely based on skin color. But anyways, I won't get into that. I think uh, it's really stupid, but anyways... Uh, the truth is that most uh, Iranians, most especially during the Sassanid era as well as before that, uh, were very much uh, the same people as they are today. And uh, that's pretty much it for uh, this video. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next one. Final thing I wanted to note here is that uh, if any of you have any questions in regards to my work or in regards to Iranian genetics, you can just email me at my email. Uh, irontalk95 at gmail.com and uh, you can ask me anything and I'll always be there to answer uh, your inquiry. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And again, as uh, always, uh, I appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.